What's up everybody? Today we're going to do the shaking grain jars video. So we'll start here. These are uninoculated. It's just sterilized brown rice in a jar. These first jars are the jars I inoculated in the inoculation video where I did the grain to grain transfer. They're the steel magnolias. So the ones I inoculated are about 90% colonized, whereas the one with not much in it is still 100% colonized. This is a separate jar of B plus that is 100% colonized. This is another one of the steel magnolia jars from the grain to grain, and it's about 90% colonized. Likewise, this is another steel magnolia jar from the grain to grain, and it's about 90% colonized. So with the grain jars, when they get around 30% colonized, you want to break them and shake them up so you can redistribute the colonized grain and you'll have more inoculation points which will result in the jar colonizing faster. Shaking jars is also a great way to see if there's any contamination hiding out somewhere in the jar. I think in most cases if you shake up a jar that's contaminated it's most likely not going to recover and it'll usually appear like it stalls out. So things to look out for are pieces of grain that no matter how many times you shake it up won't colonize or if there's big patches of mushy shit it can mean that the grain has been contaminated anytime you shake up a fully colonized jar it should recover in about two to three days um, if it hasn't recovered by then it's usually a sign that there's something else going on in there you also want to keep an eye out while you're shaking it up for any green patches or black patches or red or orange patches as those are usually signs of contamination. Before you spawn these things you really want to make sure that they're 100% colonized because one uncolonized grain exposed to the open air can open the door for contamination later on. This is a B plus jar. It's about 30 to 40 percent colonized. You can see that there's actually a lot of rhizomorphic growth going on in there. This one is also from the inoculation video. I used a T3 plate, I believe, to inoculate this. Here I'm just trying to get a better close-up view of the rhizomorphic growth that's going on in there. They're all coming along pretty nice, it seems. This is also a jar from the inoculation video where I did the multi-spore syringe inoculation. I'm going to let this one grow out a little bit more before I break and shake it up. All it really took was one or two drops of spore solution. So you really don't need much when you use multi-spore syringes. So this jar is about 40 to 50% colonized, so it's going to be a good time to break it and shake it up so we can speed up the colonization time. So just a couple more tips before we actually start shaking them up. You want to make sure that you don't open your jars at all until they're 100% colonized. You run the risk of inviting contamination into the jar. You can also use a roll of duct tape or an inflated bike tire to bang the jars on. I usually just use my hands, like I don't really have that much trouble with them. The grain should break up pretty easily. If you're having a really rough time getting it to break up, it could be a sign that there's contamination in the jar. One of the downsides of using brown rice is that it can become really sticky from all the starch in it. So keep that in mind. Because just because it's hard to break up, it doesn't always mean there's contamination in there. 
it's something you're just going to kind of have to get the feel for, but it shouldn't be completely impossible to break it up. And again, the point of shaking the jar up is to break everything up into the smallest pieces you can so it can be redistributed and it'll colonize the jar faster. So here we go, you want to make sure the lid screwed on all the way so when you bang it you don't knock the lid off and sling spawn all over the place and you're just going to bang it on the palm of your hand. You slightly turn the jar, bang it some more, you can shake it side to side, you can shake it up and down, bang it on your hand some more. Partially colonized jars are going to be really easy to shake up whereas the ones that are closer to being fully colonized sometimes will be a lot more difficult to shake up but still again it shouldn't be impossible it shouldn't take too much effort and you're just going to keep shaking it and banging it until you start to see the mycelium slowly start to disappear and it'll go from those big chunks back down to just separate grains of rice again so you want to keep shaking and banging until all the big chunks are broken down. This chunk was being a pain in the ass. It was just weird trying to do it in front of the camera and still keep it on the camera. I do eventually break it up though. So that's pretty much about it for shaking jars. In the next and last clip, I'll show you what it looks like when a fully colonized jar is completely broken up. And lastly, the mycelium can bruise and change color when you shake it up. So this is not a sign of contamination. It'll usually recover in two to three days and go back to being completely white. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, you can just leave them in the comments.